I think you will all agree that when you look at someone and find the person attractive, you cannot explain why. There are many reasons involved in this decision. Plus, some of these reasons may not even be directly related to the physique of the person. Still, when you look at a picture of someone, you instantly know if the person is attractive or not by your standards. And you know this without any doubts. But how does that happen? Can we explain or understand what beauty is to us? And worse, can someone else understand what we find beautiful? Is beauty even something universal or subjective? To me, it's definitely something subjective, just like art. As we say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? But then, why specific people become actors or models and not others? Is there a universal beauty that we could explain? Is beauty something cultural, biological, or a blend of both? I think these are mostly philosophical debates that we can discuss in the comments for those of you that would like to. I would love to chat and even debate about this with you. Anyways, back to what we know about beauty. As we know, humans typically respond emotionally to attractive images, rather than purely based on rational, visually salient reasons, which is what makes beauty so subjective. But is there a way to understand what we think of beauty and use this information to create attractive pictures? Can we understand our brain signals to achieve that? And is it even readable through these signals? Well, this is what Michel Spapé and his team from the University of Helsinki attempted to do. What you see here is called electroencephalography or EEG. It's a monitoring method used to record electrical brain activity using electrodes placed along the scalp. Specifically, they tracked two different channels with these electrodes, which are known to be responsive to stimuli that are either novel or affectively evocative, or mentally demanding and related to working memory updating, meaning that the stimuli are improbable and require a mental or physical response. But they employed two strategies in their experiments. First, they made the supposed attractive images relatively improbable to appear. They also asked the participants to focus on attractive faces by mentally counting their occurrence. To me, these strategies seem like a considerable bias to detecting actual attractiveness where the signal responses mainly tell us two things. One, that the person is lightly surprised because the attractive pictures are rare. And two, that the person is mentally active trying to remember the count and add to it. I personally see it as an overkill way of asking whether the person finds the face attractive or not since it does not really measure the beauty of the image seen. And here I am not entering about the details of the dataset they used to train their model, which is only made of celebrities. Nonetheless, this was undoubtedly a great way to find out which faces were attractive or not to train their model to focus on beautiful faces, which is a very cool application of GANs. As you can see, it clearly worked out. There's a significant difference between responses after a slight delay of time, starting approximately a fourth of a second after showing the image, where the pink lines are. The two channel responses I just mentioned are shown here. The top shows the frontal response responsible for the novel and affectively evocative stimuli, while the bottom is the parietal response responsible for mentally demanding stimuli. Here, the faces deemed attractive are green, unattractive in red, and inconsistent responses in grey. These inconsistent responses signify that the data was not used due to its low level of confidence. Attractiveness was confident when both electrodes evoked more positivity for the attractive faces. Now, let's see how they created such a model to use the brain activity to generate attractive faces. At first, they needed to generate random images to show the test subjects. To do that, they used a GAN model trained on 200,000 images of celebrity faces, already introducing a bias, but still, let's keep going. They then had a latent space from which they could use to generate new artificial images. This is just like any other GAN model, like deepfakes. It is very similar to what I already explained in previous videos, and you are most certainly aware of how it works so I won't cover it again here. But if you are not, you are free to click on the top right pop-up and watch my explanations of GAN architectures. And I'll talk a little bit more about this latent space later on. Then, each participant was asked to go through randomly generated images. Remember, here they had to count when they see an attractive face mentally. 
Once the results are all compiled, they train a classifier on these brain output signals containing the image's subject assessments. Basically, ideally containing whether the face was attractive or not. Once the classifier is trained, it's used on the brain electrical responses on randomly generated images. Note that all these randomly generated images come from a latent space originally created by the encoder of the GAN trained on the first step. As you can see here, the latent space is a space where one point represents an input the generator can use to create a unique image. This space contains all the faces that this generator can make. Thus, when an image is generated using a point in the space, or feature vector, it can be considered attractive or not by the classifier. If that's the case, it will encourage the network to create images by selecting the generator's input close to this point in the space, focusing the generator's attention on a subspace where the features of the generated faces are pleasing to the participant. Finally, this is how new images containing optimal values for personal attractive features on a human face are generated. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I definitely invite you to read their paper. It's very interesting and well written. It's the first link in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and share your thoughts in the comments, where I will answer you in the following 7 minutes, I promise. Thank you for watching.